And now for our 11th presentation, we have uh, Hiroshima Jogakuin Senior High School uh, from Hi Hiroshima. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rio. And I'm Alan. We are honored to be here. But, be, but before we begin, we would like to thank our teacher, Jerry O'Sullivan, for all his support, advice, and patience. <laughs> now let us begin. We are from Hiroshima Jogan Queen Senior High School. Our school is an all-girls Christian school located in the center of Hiroshima City. We go to school walking on this street. Every spring, the cherry blossoms bloom and it's very beautiful. However, our school was completely destroyed after the nuclear attack on August 6, 1945. On that day, students were forced to work with adults around the city, tearing down wooden houses and doing other jobs. 351 students and teachers from Hiroshima Jogakuin died. Now, there are two cenotaphs in our school to console their souls, and their names are carved in one by one. Since the 1970s, Jogakuin has focused on peace education so that students never forget the tragedy. Conducting peace activities and learning about peace education is a duty as a high school student living in Hiroshima, and we strongly feel that it is our responsibility. We learned how important it is for our generation to unite and cooperate. First, we'd like, uh, we'd like to discuss some of the risks that we face today, then introduce two ideas that can reduce those risks and lead us to a nuclear-free world. As we already know, nuclear weapons are more powerful now than the ones used on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It is said their power is about 6,000 times greater than Little Boy. If nuclear weapons were used today, the damage would be something we could never imagine. Therefore, all nuclear risks are attributed to their existence and need to be abolished for nuclear risk reduction. We believe international cooperation, unifying the younger generation, on these two points should be the focus in order to reduce nuclear risks. As long as nuclear weapons exist in this world, it is impossible to assert that the accidental use of a nuclear weapon is zero, even if they are stored with great care. If nuclear weapons were detonated accidentally or by a natural disaster, is there a way people could deal with it? In fact, the International Red Cross warns that, as things stand, there is no effective way of delivering humanitarian assistance to victims of a nuclear blast. We think that the reason why nuclear weapons are so inhumane is not only because it can destroy a whole city, but also it shut out necessary medical support. If a nuclear weapon was accidentally launched, other countries on alert status would prepare to shoot it down. Countries like the United States and Russia, being on alert at all times can lead to the increase of the possibility of accidental use. It means that an accidental launch could be mistaken as a strike, which could trigger a nuclear war. Another danger that world faces today is the fact that these countries announced that they are going to withdraw from the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, also known as the INF Treaty. This treaty between the US and Russia was signed during the Cold War to reduce the risk of nuclear war in Europe in 1987. Civil society throughout Europe protested vigorously to prevent these weapons from being used. The INF Treaty eliminate their intermediate range and shorter range missiles. It is easy to understand that both countries want to withdraw from, this, from the treaty if we consider that China and India have been promoting missile development without being bound by this treaty. China developed and acquired missiles that were banned. This is one of the biggest reasons why Russia wants to make these w missiles again. Withdrawing from the INF Treaty could lead to an arms race. This race is a big risk of nuclear weapons being upgraded. 
The destructive power of nuclear weapon is so great that there is also there is also a risk that these countries could lead to creating new, more usable and more dangerous kinds of weapons. We propose to establish an international fund called GFN. G, Global, F, Funds for a and Nuclear Free World as an organization which leads to international cooperation for these three reasons. Firstly, we believe that the gradual decrease in the number of nuclear weapons followed by complete abolishment would reduce and then eliminate the threat the world is facing right now. Therefore, we have to cooperate internationally to protect our world. Secondly, the skills which nuclear scientists have should be used to dismantle weapons. We hope to gain and practice creative solutions with wisdom gathered from all over the world by establishing this fund. Finally, NWS have not joined the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons because there is no specific, specific content of how to make funds for nuclear disarmament. In the TPNW, the financial support by NWS for people affected by nuclear weapons and testing in par paragraphs 3, 4, and 6 in Article 7. However, there is no content about financial support in non-proliferation treaty. It seems that international society has shifted the responsibility of abolishing nuclear weapons only on NWS, though the existence of nuclear weapons is threatening the whole world. That's why we think worldwide financial support will play an important role to promote nuclear abolition. We would like to explain the system of this organization. First, countries that do not possess nuclear weapons pay an amount to the GFN. This money will be divided amongst the P5 depending on the number of each country's nuclear weapons, and that money will be delivered to the nuclear weapon states. We hope to provide money to India, Pakistan, Israel, and North Korea if the number of nuclear weapons, nuclear weapons in the P5 is reduced to 80% of current numbers and enough money is collected by increased participation of countries. The officers to oversee the project will be the engineers related to nuclear dismantlement from around the world. They will disseminate the danger of the possession and ex existence of nuclear weapons. Furthermore, they will have to make nation leaders understand the danger of merely possessing these weapons. The officers will further make presentations about the risk of nuclear weapons at high schools or universities or the General Assembly of United Nations in the hopes of raising the public's awareness and the necessary funds for disarmament. In order to spread this idea to a wider audience, we hope to work with the Nuclear Weapons Abolition Alliance, whose members are IPPNW, PCSWA, and NGOs which support nuclear abolition, as they have played a role in being a bridge between the community of world, of world scientists and that of the general public. Next is the role of countries. NNWS will be required to pay. The reason why we decided this percentage is it seems difficult to raise any more than that. In 2017, it was adopted to spend 0.7% of developed countries' GDP on official development of assistance, but only five countries in Europe could achieve it. Accordingly, we believe that if each country is obligated to pay 0.07% of their GDP, all countries will be able to pay regardless of whether they are a developed or developing country. On the other hand, NWS will, will not be required to pay into this organization. However, they have to spend the provided money and an equal sum on nuclear disarmament. They will have to report clearly on how they use the money on once a month to the member countries. As an incentive, NNWS who pay will be allowed free trade with member countries, including NWS. We want to believe that the nuclear weapon states have intended to abolish nuclear weapons, but it has become difficult to achieve. We think this because the United States, Russia, and the UK made the NPT almost 50 years ago, and it is stipulated that the responsibility of nuclear weapon states to negotiate for nuclear disarmament sincerely. The cost is certainly one matter, so if there was an international cooperation system, NWS might take action. Also, according to the final draft of the NPT Review Conference in 2015, 
All nuclear weapon states agree with chapter 154, paragraph 11. In that paragraph, two main points are specified. First is the responsibility of the nuclear weapon states. The final draft says that they have to report six items about their nuclear possessions, such as the types, number, and the delivery systems of their weapons, to the extent of which does not harm their national security. The second is the nuclear weapon states have to take measures to release or reduce the operational system of nuclear we state weapons. According to the conference report by Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan, the 2015 final draft was not adopted because the United States and Egypt were opposed about the initiative to eliminate or to ban nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction in the Middle East. Takao Takahara, an international relations professor at Meiji Gakuin University, told us that the conflict between the United States and Egypt was the main reason for it not being adopted. That is, nuclear weapon states did agree to report the information of their arsenal and take action for nuclear, nuclear reduction. That's why we think that our proposal is not too idealistic. Finally, to protect our fragile but beautiful world, we strongly suggest that the young generation create a future society united to realize a nuclear-free world as global citizens. Therefore, it is, our, uh, it is also important to support the responsibility of peace building through education. In fact, there is a unique curriculum in our school called Peace, Activ uh, peace Studies. We learn about various global issues. The studies focused mainly on nuclear weapons issues over six years, as you can see in this chart. Our English classes also use these texts in class. These books written by graduates and family, family members who survived, uh, who survived the bomb, give us first-hand account of what happened on August 6th. We also take great pride in Setsuko Thuro, who experienced the atomic bomb as a 13-year-old student of Joaquin. She has become a leading figure in ICANN and gave the acceptance speech at the 2017 Nobel Peace Prize ceremony. Not to repeat the tragedy of another air bombing attack and to share those memories, Shugakuin students have served as guides for people from other prefectures or abroad around the Peace Memorial Park for 30 years. We have taken part in it several times. Through these experiences, we have been able to exchange opinions about nuclear ab abolition and peace buildings with people who have wide and varying values. It made our perspectives wider and made us have the responsibility of promoting nuclear disarmament as citizens of Hiroshima. There is a signatures collecting committee at our school. The members of the club and regular students collect signatures monthly around the atomic bomb dome and in the city in order to conclude the TPNW. Every year, members of the, com members of the committee bring the signatures to the NPT conference. We brought some signature papers here, so please sign them and feel free to ask us for a blank one to take it back to your school and join us in raising awareness. If nuclear weapons were used today, the whole world would be at risk of being destroyed. Reducing the risk of nuclear weapons is the responsibility of all countries. We believe that the GFN can play a role in performing nuclear risk reduction with international cooperation. It is, oh, it is necessary for us to make the right choices now for a nuclear-free world in the future. In that respect, we must stop and think about how education cha can change the world. As students, we must take action to contribute to the problems in the world. To end this presentation, we would like you to be an investor in our future world. Thank you for listening. <laughs>